Hi, I'm Tom Pearson with the Cascades Volcano Observatory of the U.S. Geological Survey. I'm here to talk to you about volcano awareness. Is there a volcanic hazard that could affect Portland? Yes, volcanic ash is the hazard most likely to affect Portland. Wind direction, size of the eruption, and volcano source are the key factors. The chance of Portland receiving one centimeter of ash, that's about four-tenths of an inch or more, is a little more than one chance in 10,000 in any given year. And that's a pretty low probability. It's good to remember that all of us live with, with potential hazards and their risks. Acknowledging them, learning about them, and preparing for them are vital to minimizing injury, disruption, and expense when these hazards might next occur. So which volcanoes could send ash to Portland? Well, in fact, Portland has its own set of volcanoes, the Boring volcan Volcanic Field. This includes about 80 small volcanoes that dot the Portland-Vancouver metropolitan area. Examples include Rocky Butte and Mount Tabor. In this type of volcanic field, any one volcanic vent remains active for only a few years and then shuts off. Activity begins again with the opening of a new vent. In this field, activity started about two and a half million years ago and continued until 50,000 years ago. Now, 50,000 years is not that long ago, since previous pauses in activity lasted up to 800,000 years. Although the field is now dormant, it is not extinct. But the probability for future eruptions in this field is very low. However, an eruption right in Portland could be very damaging with small lava flows and heavy localized ash fall. Mount Hood is our iconic backyard volcano, only 49 miles east-southeast of downtown Portland. But an important factor is that rivers draining the volcano do not reach Portland. Mount Hood last erupted in the 18th century, just before Lewis and Clark passed through. Some small volcanic explosions did occur in the mid-19th century, however. Mount Hood is not a big ash producer, but small ash eruptions could affect aviation at PDX, nearby transportation corridors such as Interstate 84 and Highway 26, and Portland's water supply from the Bull Run, Bull Run Reservoir. Major hazards at Mount Hood are lahars. These are big mud flows that could flow down the Sandy River and then subsequent infilling of the river channel with sediment. The combination of these could damage homes, roads, and other infrastructure, yet because we don't have the rivers coming to Portland, it would not affect Portland directly. Minor ashfall could reach Portland. Mount St. Helens is our other nearby volcano, 52 miles northeast of downtown Portland, and only three miles farther away than Mount Hood. It last erupted in 2004 to 2008, and its last major explosive eruption was in 1980. Mount St. Helens is a characteristically vigorous, explosive volcano. It's been very active over the last 4,000 years, and it's the biggest ash producer in recent time in the Cascades. Portland probably would get up to an inch or two of ash during the next explosive eruption if wind was out of the north to northeast. But a big eruption with that same wind direction could deliver more ash. Ashfall here in Portland would have impacts on regional transportation, communication, infrastructure, human health and uh, safety, power supply, water supply, wastewater treatment, agriculture, and possibly even the structural integrity of roofs of some buildings. Other Cascade volcanoes could send ash to Portland as well. Ash from Mount Rainier, the Three Sisters, Newberry, or Crater Lake could reach Portland if wind directions were right. But why is volcanic ash a hazard? Volcanic ash is composed of fine, jagged fragments of minerals and glass. It's hard, it's gritty, and it's abrasive. It scratches glass and steel. 
It's often corrosive due to minute acid droplets that adhere to the ash particles. Health effects to people and animals are usually minor and only a nuisance, but sometimes they can be serious. Ash can be toxic when ingested or, hail, or inhaled if it contains fluorine, which is attached to some of these small droplets, or if it contains a certain type of silicate mineral called cristobalite. At longer distances from the source, ash particles can be very, very fine, less than four ten thousandths of an inch in diameter. Such minute particles can lodge in people's lungs and can't be coughed out. This is bad for people with breathing, breathing problems, obviously, people with asthma, COPD, emphysema, or bronchitis. Ash can also irritate and scratch eyes, possibly damage, damaging the cornea. Driving is particularly dangerous in ash because visibility is reduced. It gets dark and there's lots of swirling, dusty ash around. Headlights really have difficulty penetrating this ash. And roads can be very slippery when wet, almost like ice. Ash is damaging to electronics, to, to vehicles, to exposed machinery, to sewers, to power transmission, to communication systems, to open uh, water supply reservoirs, and to wastewater treatment plants. Portland residents could possibly experience disruptions to electric power, municipal water supply, and sewage treatment. Ashfall can shut down or severely limit air, rail, and road transportation. And there will be limits to getting people, food, and supplies in and out of the area easily during and after ash has fallen. Ash is heavy and it's cohesive when wet, like, like snowfall, but considerably heavier, and it doesn't melt. In accumulations of four inches or more, it can collapse roofs. That much wet ash weighs 20 to 25 pounds per square foot. So what can be done? Number one, keep ash out of buildings. Keep it out of critical equipment and ventilation systems. Keep it out of storm sewers. Put sandbags around storm sewers and drains and manhole covers. Also di disconnect gutter downspouts from drains to the storm sewer system or to dry wells. Stay inside, inside buildings, your home, if at all possible. Or if you must go out, wear high efficiency dust masks and goggles when you do go outside. Seal leaky doors and, and windows with tape or damp towels to keep the ash out of the house. Remember to wear your eyeglasses and not contact lenses. Avoid driving unless absolutely necessary and keep your speed below 20 miles per hour during and immediately after ash fall. Ash cleanup is important and clean it up as quickly as possible to prevent the ash from continuing to blow in the wind. To do this, dampen it lightly with a hose to keep the dust down and then shovel and sweep it up as much as you can, leaving only a slight a slight amount behind to wash down with water and do this sparingly. To flush the ash off cars and equipment and driveways, use water. But don't flush it into the storm sewers again. And do not wipe ash off of metal glass surfaces because it will scratch. Clean ash off roofs and gutters as soon as possible when this can be done safely. And it's interesting to note that more people are injured falling off their ladders and roofs doing this than they are by the effects of falling ash. Remember to clean or replace your air filters on your cars or trucks uh, and service machinery frequently. Get your car serviced frequently while the ash is still blowing around, including more frequent oil changes and lubrication. Okay, that's a lot of information, so here's a summary of what we should do to prepare for volcanic ash. Before it arrives, have an emergency plan in place and keep an emergency preparedness kit in your home. Have backup food and a water supply that's usable if the power goes out. Have high efficiency dust masks on hand and monitor the US Geological Survey eruption alerts and announcements by public officials. 
during an ash fall, stay inside as much as possible. Don't wear contact lenses. Do wear dust masks and goggles. And keep ash from entering buildings, machinery, and electronics. After the ash has fallen, place sandbags around storm drains to prevent first rainfall from washing that ash into the storm sewers. Clean up ash as soon as possible, but do not wash it into those sewers. Dampen it to prevent the dusty conditions that can arise if you sweep it up dry. Use extreme caution in cleaning roofs and gutters. Limit driving as much as possible. For more information on this, go to the U.S. Geological Volcano Hazards website, which is volcanoes.usgs.gov slash ash. Thanks very much.